This is really weird, isn't it? I'm totally out of my comfort zone and I'm sitting in a spare room in my home talking to an iPhone, bringing you a message. Me, the cadet who willfully rejected any attempt to record her preaching to watch it back. I just totally refused. Now that doesn't really sound like me, does it? But this is weird, right? You're in your home and I'm in mine. Things are not as they were, not what we thought, not what we want, not what we had hoped for. Canara virus has rocked our world, quite literally. Nothing is the same and it will be a while before we know what normal looks like again. However, I do have coffee and that's a big relief. There's no skip here, Amanda. It's sitting on my bench. But something Amanda said a few weeks ago really touched me and sparked some thoughts about a message for after Easter. You see, Amanda reminded us that often we want to move from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday and forget to stop in between. It's hard to be confronted by the horrors of the cross. In our version of scripture, they don't actually say what it really, really looked like because the writers at the time and the people they were writing to at the time, they knew what it looked like. They knew the horrors of crucifixion. But we turn our head away from it. And, you know, Mel Gibson, in his, as he captured it in his movie, The Passion, it was really, really confronting. And I don't like that stuff. I, I cannot bear witnessing harm and it, uh, that type of infliction on another human being. It really does something to me. It's horrific. Um, and I, I turn my head away. And I guess there are others that are uh, the same. But my thoughts were ignited knowing that I was going to bring you a message for the week after Easter. And sometimes I wonder, what do we do with Easter now it's over? Do we tend to forget it and just move on? Okay, we've celebrated Easter. Let's sort of get back to what life is normally looking like. And I often have to ask myself, what has Easter done in me this year? Because Easter should change us every year. I wrote in my journal just the other day, every day is an Easter day for Jesus lives in my heart. I know it. I feel it. I experience it. But my question for us to contemplate this morning is have you allowed Easter to change you in this topsy-turvy COVID-19 world that we're living in? How have you changed? Life had completely and utterly changed for the disciples. These two we meet on the road to Emmaus were dejected, disappointed, lost. They were physically and emotionally exhausted. It had been a long and confusing week. And on this Sunday morning, they were going back to their dull, lifeless, too predictable lives. They'd lost all hope and were on their way back to their previous lives, miserable and without hope. Can you hear the sound of their footsteps on the stony ground? It, that too was a dejected sound because all hope was lost. So dejected were they that they didn't see or hear a man come alongside them and begin to walk with them. What's your problem, he asks. What? You mean you don't know? Where have you been? Living under a stone? In language literally for today, we might say, you don't know you're supposed to be living at home or staying at home? Emmaus is thought to have been approximately 13 kilometres from Jerusalem, so about a three-hour walk. In the midst of disappointment, discouragement and isolation and unprecedented days, Jesus himself drew near, even though at this time they and we don't know it's Jesus. One disciple replies, we had hoped. Do you hear the past tense there? We had hoped. In other words, we've lost all hope. This man who was a great prophet and teacher was crucified. He's dead. We had hoped that he was the one, the one to redeem Israel from the grips of the Roman Empire. But even though some women had said the angels have said he's alive, no one's seen him. He's dead, gone. And now we're going home, back to Emmaus. 
and we don't know what tomorrow will look like. Despite what Jesus had told them, they only saw his death. Despite the promises they fully knew from the prophet Isaiah, all they saw was death. Despite spending many days with Jesus, maybe three years, they quickly forgot so much that he had taught them and all they saw was death and the frustration of their hopes. So this stranger, who seemingly didn't know the events that had just occurred in Jerusalem, began to speak to them of the scriptures. The revelation of the Easter reality begins with the fulfilment of scripture. The suffering of the Messiah, and we need to note that Cleopas doesn't use the word Messiah or Saviour, just prophet and teacher. How quickly they had forgotten and lost hope in this man that Peter, not so long ago, had declared was the Christ. The stranger reminds them that the scripture says that the suffering of the Messiah was necessary in God's providential plan for the redemption of Israel and the salvation of sinners. As they arrive in Emmaus, they invite this man to stay and eat with them. And as Jesus breaks the bread, their eyes are opened. What did they now see that they hadn't seen before? Did they remember the Last Supper? They mentioned that their hearts had burned within them as they heard scripture being reiterated to them. As they were reminded of all scripture taught, their hearts burned. They had been so wrapped up with the actual events of the last week that they didn't actually allow what they knew of scripture to help them understand what was actually happening. And so note to us there too, to not let what we know of the Bible to keep us from understanding what scripture really says. So Jesus took time to break, to take the bread, to bless the bread, to break the bread and give them bread and their eyes were immediately opened. And as I contemplated this, my thoughts went to the words of the potter's hand, take me, mould me, fill me, use me, not dissimilar to what Jesus does here with the bread. And as we allow Jesus to break us, speak to us, bless us with his presence and mould us to his character, as he gives to us so many things, how much our eyes are opened to who he actually is. The more we allow Jesus to break and change and mould us, the more we know of Christ. And these two exhausted, disappointed, dejected, confused disciples took the bread offered them and everything changed. Jesus vanished and the disciples immediately run back to Jerusalem. You see, Jesus had all earlier taught them that he had come to bring fire to the earth. Go back to chapter 12, verses 49 to 50. And now they had that fire, the new step, renewed energy and courage to return to the place where their hope had been destroyed. They knew they had to go and tell the other disciples. They knew they had to do something with what had happened to them. They knew then that what the women had said was actually true. Jesus was alive. Hope was not dead. It was very much alive and well and rejuvenated in these once tired, sorry disciples. Perhaps these guys on this road to Emmaus were slow of heart at the beginning, slow to believe, quick to give up hope. But honestly, aren't we sometimes the same? Frederick Buchner interprets Emmaus as the place we go in order to escape and we all have our road to Emmaus and maybe we feel we're on one right now. Nothing is the same. Our world has changed and we are perhaps finding it hard to come to terms with, to understand this is not what it was supposed to look like. The risen Lord meets us on our road to Emmaus in the ordinary places and experiences of our lives and in the places to which we retreat when life is too much for us, in our homes of isolation. And for some of us, that means an extra level of loneliness. You see, this year has been like no other. 
The word unprecedented has been banded around and used extensively over and over. But that first Easter was like no other. It too was unprecedented. It caused confusion and dejection and disappointment. And maybe for some of us, we are losing hope. When will it end? What will come after? If Easter teaches us anything, then this year it teaches us that Jesus himself always draws near to us on our road to Emmaus, on our own individual journey. Easter is never over at sundown on Easter Sunday. It stretches to the rest of their li our lives. The women couldn't perhaps call back the angels and these two disciples might never meet that stranger on a road again, but no matter, life would never be the same again. And we're hearing that almost constantly, aren't we? Life will not be normal as we knew normal before COVID-19. And in some ways that might be a good thing. For these disciples, life was never the same again and that was the best thing that ever happened to them. We cannot celebrate Easter and not let it change us. Every year Easter ought to change us. And this year in particular, it has been an Easter like no other. If we do not allow Jesus to change us at Easter, then we make a mockery of what Easter is all about. I wonder what your journey is at the moment. This journey of isolation, of being at home will look different for each one of us, but this is our current journey. This is our road to Emmaus. So I invite you to come on the road to Emmaus with me and allow Jesus to draw near and walk and talk with you.